Welcome to this video about protein and the roles in our body. Um, I'm going to go through, I think, about nine main functions of protein in the body. It's been a long time since I've made a video, so uh, I'm a little rusty, uh, but we'll see. Maybe it's like riding a bike. Okay, so um, when we think about protein, first I want you to think about the elements that it contains. So uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sometimes sulfur. The building block or monomer of a protein, amino acids, and there are 20 different amino acids. So the first role I wanna talk about is albumin. So let's write that here next to this one. Albumin is a very important protein that helps to maintain blood pressure. And the way it does that is by increasing osmotic pressure. So it helps maintain blood pressure by increasing osmotic pressure. And what that means is it makes it so that there's more solute in the blood vessel. And then that solute um, causes water to be pulled in to the blood vessel. So we can go ahead and highlight albumin in yellow. And then you can see in the blood vessel there's uh, some globular proteins of albumin. And not surprisingly, the liver makes albumin. Virtually all of the proteins that we have in our blood are made by the liver. Thank you, lovely liver. Why don't we go ahead and look at number two, um, ATP energy. This is of a lovely liver over here. So it is, a, our bodies are able to break down protein to make ATP energy. It's not their preferred fuel. They would much prefer glucose or fatty acids or even ketones, but proteins can be used as necessary. So in order to do this though, the nitrogen has to be taken off of the protein. And we call that deamination. So they must be D, meaning to undo something, anim aminated, that's taking off the amine group. So they have to be deaminated by the liver before entering the mitochondria. The mitochondria can't make ATP from nitrogen. It has to have just, just once the carbons and it collects all of the electrons. So then, so they go into the, the deaminated amino acid, or yeah, the deaminated proteins will go into the mitochondria. Let's draw one here. And then and I'm highlighting this in blue. And then from that, ATP can be produced. And also then the nitrogen that got taken off then is in the form of ammonia. And this ammonia is toxic if it builds up in our blood. And so the liver does some major enzymatic acrobatics to convert that ammonia into what we know as urea, which is a bigger molecule that contains the nitrogen. In birds, more of it is converted into uric acid, which is a solid, and we do make this, and if someone has too much of it in their blood, they can get gout. And then a third nitrogenous waste is called creatinine. So all of these are basically nitrogen waste by our body that have to be excreted. So let's see if we can fit this on here. Nitrogenous waste. And you can thank your kidneys for that, excreted by the kidneys. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna just put a little highlight on here. So by using proteins for energy or even breaking them down just to recycle them, you end up with ammonia that's gotta be converted into one of these slightly less toxic forms of a nitrogenous waste, which can then be excreted by the kidneys. Okay, so um, let's go on to number three. 
and number three is down here. What this represents is a synapse, say for example in your brain. So this could be the end of one neuron talking to another neuron. So um, proteins serve as receptors. protein receptors, and if we're talking at a synapse, then specifically I'm talking about four neurotransmitters. So let's highlight that word in pink, sorry, neurotransmitters. All of the functions themselves I'm putting in yellow. So, so far we have, this is our third one, proteins can serve as receptors. And then let's go ahead and color the receptors green. And the neurotransmitters pink. And so they bind, they cross the synaptic cleft and they can bind. Here are the neurotransmitters before they're released. So they get released into what's called the synaptic cleft and then they bind to receptors. So you maybe have heard of dopamine or serotonin, like this could be an example of a neurotransmitter, but in order for that dopamine to work in your brain or that serotonin to work in your brain, it has to bind to a receptor. Okay, I'm going to stop there and that will be video number one. So this is protein part one and then I'll start with protein part two.